Okay, hi, hello, I'm Michael Skamburelis and welcome to the latest Castle Game Engine video. The topic of this video, uh, the number of topics in this video that I will present are viewports, camera, navigation, and basically the them is how to see in the viewport what you want to see and how to make the user see in the viewport what you want the user, the player of your game, them to see. So at the beginning, of course, go ahead to our web page and download the engine for your operating system. And it works like this. So this is the Castle Game Engine editor and we were going to be using it during this presentation as I advise you to use it uh, for the development of your games. And let's start by creating a new project. If you're new to the engine, I kind of always advise you to actually check out those projects, create a new project from all of those templates, especially the 3D FPS game and the 2D game are, I think, a good uh, demonstrations uh, how to yeah, how to design such games in the Castle Game Engine easily. Uh, in this presentation, I will actually jump between various types of project. Let's start from the empty project, from the empty template, mm. because this way I will be able to show you how to create your own design kind of from scratch. Okay, so let's go ahead and create it. Oops, sorry, I already did before. Um, okay, so the empty project, well, it starts with some code. Basically, the most important piece of code here is the game state main, which describes how to react to the user pressing keys, mouse buttons, and well, doing whatever in your game. And then in the data, I guess the most important file is the game state main dot user interface. And this is the design of the user interface of your game and also of the viewport, which means your two-dimensional or three-dimensional game content. So open it by just double-clicking on it on, or go to the design open. And it looks like this. So this is the empty project template. Well, so it starts by looking empty. <laughs> Mostly empty, right? There's just this label FPS that shows the frames per second. I mean, when the code will actually run, it will update this label to show the frames per second. And there's nothing more here yeah, at the beginning. So let's add something. So you want to go double right click on the group one, which is kind of like this top level of your user interface hierarchy. And you want to add a new user interface element. And during this presentation, we will focus on two things, actually one thing, which is a viewport. A viewport in 2D and viewport in 3D, they are kind of the same thing. I mean, they are literally like this, are the same thing in Castle Game Engine. They both use the TechCastle viewport class. It just has a bit different defaults and a bit different navigation by default. But I would like to emphasize here that like in case of Castle Game Engine, the two-dimensional games are kind of just like a special case of a three-dimensional setup. Uh, which is also a good news for you if you think about implementing some mixed, like a bit 2D, but sometimes maybe the user can see that it's a bit 3D. So you can make those types of games in Castle Game Engine because two-dimensional is actually a three-dimensional with just some things kind of locked and presented in a specific way. Um, okay, so let's start with the 3D in this case. I will show the 2D later. And once I have clicked on creating, once I have created the 3D viewport, we can see kind of our default stuff that we propose you to use, so start with inside your viewport. Uh, okay, so first of all, the viewport component. But the viewport component, as you saw by adding, the viewport component is also a user interface class. What does it mean in practice? Well, it means that you don't need it to be full screen, uh, to be full size, which means that it doesn't have to fill the parent. It can have any size of yours on your screen that you would like to. Okay, so you can drag it, resize it, move it around, you can anchor it wherever you would like to. So a viewport is just a two-dimensional area where we display your three-dimensional or two-dimensional game. So a viewport is like a window into your game, <laughs> like a viewport, that's, that's, that's why it's called it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the full size though is definitely not the, like the reasonable default. You will usually, I guess, want to use the full size. Um, okay, so what more do we have here in the viewport? Well, we have something called background, which by default determines the gradient, the colors that uh, represent the sky and the ground underneath. You can, of course, customize those colors like this or like this, and it will all change uh, accordingly. Let's, for example, make the top of the sky a little bit like that. Okay, so 
that's how the background works. You don't have to use the background, you can just set nothing, nil in Pascal here, and then it works like this, then it's just showing you a single solid color uh, underneath your viewport. Well, I guess usually the, view, the, 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 the background, some gradient in the background is actually useful to kind of know what's going on, because you can see the horizon. And also in the background, if you would like to, you can configure skybox, which means that you can assign here six textures that show anything you want, like some mountains, like some cloud, like some stars, things that are so distant that the simple way to render them is using a skybox. And more about this in actually a different video that we have about backgrounds. So let's go to the stuff that is actually like visible in 3D in our viewport. So by default we have here three things. One is the camera. This shows the camera that you had that you are designing seeing here in the viewport hierarchy this is the camera that will be used to actually render the game for the user so if we will run the project well this is what the user will actually see uh, so this is the camera uh, we have also the point light which is just something to make the scene brighter if this is the only light source in the scene so for example if the light would not work I can set it exists false to like kind of disable it then if there is no lighting then everything is black okay so this works correctly and you have a simple plane at the bottom which can act kind of as like a ground for you where you can place additional items now of course in the viewport it's like a you can place more interesting stuff. We have a number of primitives like box, cylinder, sphere, uh, and uh, cone. So you can just uh, click and add them. If you want to move them, go ahead and switch to the select and move transform manipulation. And then you can move them like this. So let me add just a few things here. Let's also add that cylinder like this. You can customize the color of them. Um, you can also customize the way lighting works for them, and lit is useful if you don't want to have, well, if you don't want to care about lighting in your scene. Um, okay, and of course, if you want to add something designed, for example, in Blender or in Spine or any other authoring software, you have like the full featured uh, model loader in our engine, and this is basically Tecastle Scene. If you use Tecastle Scene, you can set the URL, you can point the URL property uh, to indicate any GLTF, Spine, XVD, Colada, STL, a number of other model formats that we support in the engine. So your custom scene is like a, your, 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 your way into actually loading some, I guess, complicated models into custom game engine. But still, the primitives are, I guess, a good thing to start playing around. Uh, of course, you can also add uh, different light sources here. So, like this, okay, so this is a spotlight, I can rotate it, and here we go, this is another light source that is shining on our scene, let me actually disable the point light for a second so that you can see just the effect of the spotlight, okay, so it works like this, it's a spot which means it kind of shines uh, using kind of a cone from which, uh, along which the light is cast, you can of course adjust some things like intensity of the lighting, like color of the lighting, and it works like this, okay? So those are, you can add the lighting, what more can you add? Well, you can also add the cameras. So you can have multiple cameras in your scene, so now we have camera 1 and the camera 2. You can have multiple cameras in your scene and you can move them around, design them independently. What the user will actually see when the user will run your game is determined by the camera property on the viewport. So we can switch it right now between camera 1 and uh, camera 2 or nothing. If you set it to nothing then the user will just see a black screen saying that well no camera has been selected. So well, usually you do want to select here some camera. We just allow you to select nothing for consistency. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's actually run the game to confirm that right now the game will show the view from camera 1 and you can actually click on the camera and see the preview from the camera. So this is, well, disregarding some gizmos here, so, but this is the view that the user should see once we run the game. So let's try it out. I'm going to do run menu and I press the compile and run command.
Okay, so there you go. Our simple game that shows uh, a box and a cylinder, though the cylinder is kind of very much dark. <laughs> so this is what the user is seeing in your game. It matches the camera one that we have set in our uh, in the editor. Okay, by default the user does not have an option to actually move this camera. Clicking here, pressing some keys, and they don't do anything because well we haven't yet written any code or added any component that actually handles those keys. So by default this is like well essentially a static image actually in this case, although it's not really static because if you go like this, if you resize the window, you will see that the viewport will keep showing something sensible. So it, it, it is rendering of course the three-dimensional world all the time. Um, okay. So, what more can we do? Well, okay, so let's actually address the one issue that I mentioned. So, by default, the user cannot do anything. You can write some code yourself in the game state main.pass to handle the keys and mouse events from your user to move the camera, to change the translation and rotation of the camera. You can also use one of our ready components to do exactly that. We have a components that, call, that are called navigation. And navigation in our engine, the navigation stands for how can you use your keyboard and your mouse to move, to change the camera translation and rotation, okay? So you can use a number of those animation, uh, navigation methods that are mentioned here. Uh, for example, I'm going to use navigation walk, and this allows the user to walk using the AWSD keys that you probably know from, well, all the three-dimensional games that you have played. It's a simple way to enable user to move around the scene. Uh, it's called walk, not fly, which means that the gravity walks. By default, you have this checkbox here, gravity, that you can toggle. If you toggle the gravity to false, then it's actually a fly uh, navigation. Well, by default, we have created walk navigation, the gravity is true. So, let's try walking, actually. Uh, though, before I run the game, let me increase the size of the plane, because I don't want to fall down into infinity, okay? So, it's definitely easiest to just create a big, 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 big uh, plane so that I don't fall down. Let's also reactivate the point light so that yeah, everything is a bit brighter. And let's go ahead and run the game again. Okay, so there we have it. So this is a new version of our game. So first of all, everything is brighter because I have enabled the point light again. And second of all, if I use the A, W, S, D keys, I can walk around. I can use the arrows to rotate. I can drag the mouse around to move around uh, my uh, view. Okay, if I would like, I can of course adjust the way it works. In particular, I usually, especially for debug purposes, it's actually very useful to move well, much faster. Right? So I can go like this. And by the way, you don't have to press compile and run. If you didn't change the code at all and you know it, then you can also just go save the design using design, save, control S, and just go with run, run without compiling. You don't need to recompile the game if only the design has changed. And right now, the only thing that we changed is the moving speed. And that's how it works now, okay? So the camera moves much faster. If I would like the user to be able to use mouse look, I can also select this mouse look checkbox. I can also toggle this mouse look property from code at any moment I want in my game. For example, if I would like, maybe the user has to press some right mouse button or press a F4. Uh, then I can also toggle this mouse look on and off inside the game whenever I want. Okay. Uh, so that's how you would enable the user to move around in your game by adding a new navigation component as a child of viewport. Okay, so that's as easy as it can get. It's just a navigation component under a viewport. Um, okay, so what more did I want to talk about? Well, I wanted to talk about something that I actually already shown, which is how to move yourself at design time around in the editor. So by default, we have a navigation method in a three-dimensional viewport called fly with a speed of 10. And you can see that it is so by looking at the top above the design area. This says fly speed 10. Uh, to tell you that you are in fly mode and that you are using the speed tag. So, how does it work? If I press the right mouse button, I enter the mouse look, which means that now when I'm dragging the mouse 
and still holding the right mouse button. If I'm dragging the mouse now, then I'm looking around my scene, uh, my world, and uh, yeah, looking around. Now, if I press the A, W, S, D keys, as you know from all the games, then I can walk around, move around. And this is a fly mode, so the gravity doesn't work here. And I can also use the Q and A key to move up and down. And the, of course, this is a design view, debug view, essentially, so the collisions are also disabled in this case. So you can like move around here freely and explore your world. If I want to increase or decrease speed of movement, which is often very useful because, well, you may want, you may have some big things in your design, you may have some small things, you may want to focus on some details. So it's useful sometimes to change the moving speed and to do this, you use the mouse scroll wheel while pressing the right mouse button. So right now I'm going to, to move, use the mouse scroll wheel to increase the speed. Okay, and I'm going faster. Or if I want to, I can scroll in, scroll down, and this means that the speed will go slower. We will go slower and slower. So I can increase my speed, decrease my speed, and focus on some detail that I want to. Okay, so in fly mode, mouse scroll wheel controls your speed. Okay, what are some other ways to navigate yourself in the world? Well, some of the the most important commands that you can use are listed in our viewport menu. Let's try them out. Let's start with the focus select transfer with the key shortcut F. So the thing here is that if you select any transformation using the hierarchy or maybe using our selection transform, actually you can use any of those two to select stuff. So if you select your transformation, which is almost any object you see here, in any way, if you select it, then you can use the F key, like focus, to actually move your camera to it. So I will select the box now, press the F key, and there you go. The camera kind of zooms in, positions itself such that you see the box nicely. So I can go to cylinder, I can go to the box, maybe I want to see the plane, okay, so the camera also zoomed out to see the whole plane. Uh, if I want to see everything, then I can also use the view all command, home key, and this naturally kind of puts me in a zoomed out position such that I see everything. Okay? And the plane, in case of this, because I made the plane large, so in this case, like the size of this plane, plane one kind of actually determines uh, what happens when you do the view all. Um, okay, but in general, yeah, use view all if you just got lost and you want to see everything. Okay, uh, we also have some menu commands like top, bottom, front, back, right, left to view the scene from those six square major axes that are very much useful to observe your scene from and the key shortcuts for those things are deliberately consistent with for example blender so you can press 7 to view the scene from top control 7 to view it from the bottom 1 to view it from front control 1 to view it from the back 3 to view it from the right and control 3 to view it from the left what exactly does the front, left, right mean? It's specified in our manual, but basically it's consistent with GLTF, X3D, and uh, yeah, and, and, and you, you, I hope you will find it kind of intuitive what happens there, especially if you load here some GLTF model designed in Blender, looking at Blender, top, right, and so on, uh, views, then it will kind of match what happens in custom game engine. Um, okay, so those are like the ways to switch between various views in Castle Game Engine. Uh, what more can I talk about? So the cameras, I actually already shown a few things about cameras. So the camera determines what do we see. Okay, how can I change what will the cam what does the camera see? Well, obviously, I can manipulate the camera just like any other transformation. So I can just drag this axis, this, this axis, and I can move the camera around. Dragging the camera by the blue axis, Z axis, means that it zooms in and zooms out. And dragging the camera by the red axis, X, it means that I'm moving the camera left, right. Finally, dragging the camera by the green arrow, it means the Y axis and it means the, the camera moves up and down. I can of course also rotate the camera 
And as you can see, when I'm doing it, I'm observing what happens from the camera preview window, which is, of course, very much useful to realize what happens as a consequence of my actions, of my manipulations of the camera, right? So I can manipulate the camera like that, looking at the preview and manipulating it here. Another way to manipulate the camera, sometimes more useful, is sometimes you may want to kind of position yourself in the editor to view what you want to view, and then you want to synchronize your camera, in this case camera one, currently selected camera, you, want to, you may want to kind of synchronize the camera to show exactly the thing that you are right now seeing from the editor point of view. And to do this you use the viewport align camera to view command, key shortcut control zero, and it works like this, yeah? So as you can see in the preview, now those two views right now match, and that's exactly what should have happened, right? So the camera, camera one, now sees exactly the thing that we were looking at in the editor. If I go ahead and see something else from the editor, the camera one will keep it, it stayed where, where it was, okay? But I can, of course, press the control zero again to keep synchronizing it if I want to. Uh, you can also synchronize in kind of the inverse direction if I want in my viewport. If I want to see what the camera is seeing, I can use the viewport align view to camera using the key shortcut zero. So wherever I will go in the editor, wherever I will look, I can always press the key zero to align my view to what the currently selected camera, camera one, is seeing. Oh, and by the way, you can also, so those are like two ways to manipulate the camera, right? You can treat the camera as a transformation, you can drag it around like this, or you can align the camera to views. So those are like two major ways to change what the camera is seeing. Oh, and by the way, you can also pin the camera. So because by default, if I will select something else, then this camera preview, which is often very useful, disappears uh, because it only shows the current camera. So when no camera is selected, well, we would not know which one to show. Uh, so. If you want to keep this camera preview to keep being visible, I can pin it just by pressing this button. And now whatever else I will choose, the camera 2 preview will stay, will keep being visible in my viewport. And well, right now I can again move the camera to like this. I can also, of course, move other stuff like this box and observe what it means, how, it, how my movement looks like from the point of view of camera 2. Okay, so pinning the camera, definitely useful. Um, okay, uh, what more do we have? Well, I was talking about, uh, so far, about the flight navigation mode inside the editor. This is your default navigation method in 3D. But there are other navigation methods. One is called examine, and the final one is called 2D. So the examine navigation method. It means that the things will react a bit differently to your key and mouse uh, actions. In the case of the examine mode, kind of imagine that you're holding a world as like, you know, a, a box, a thing in your head, and you want to look at it from various angles. You want to look at, uh, at some side of it, this or that. So the examine mode is very much useful for that. In the examine mode, if I click the right mouse button, I'm rotating the scene like this. And this is a very easy way to, well, yeah, see the scene from various angles, okay? If I press shift and then drag with the right mouse button, then I'm panning the view. And of course, the mouse scroll wheel still does the zoom in, zoom out. I mean, does the zoom in, zoom out. Okay, so that's an examine mode. And finally, we have a two-dimensional navigation method, which isn't really that useful in 3D because it kind of locks you to one plane. As you can guess, it's very much useful in case of two-dimensional games. Uh, so let's go ahead actually and create a new project. Let's again choose the empty project, but this time we will create an empty project that we will turn into a simple two-dimensional project. So let's start this from something empty, creating a viewport. And this is your default viewport setup in 2D. Okay, as you can see, like this big orange thing, this is now our camera gizmo. It shows us what the camera, if we would run the scene, if we would run the game, what the camera will see. Um, yeah, this is what your camera is seeing. Now, the things that we 
place in the viewport by default for you. Of course, you can change it, delete it, as I shown. Where we have the camera. Okay, I said it. <laughs> uh, I said this multiple times. So you have the camera here to see to 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 indicate what you are seeing, and we also have a plane. It's just the simple white rectangle in the middle of the screen, just to give you some sense of what you're looking at. Just just to be a starting point for your own uh, design of the two-dimensional game. By default, this plane has a size 200 by 200, so it's kind of huge. It's kind of normal also in two-dimensional games. In three-dimensional games, you usually follow the convention, it's just a convention though, but you usually follow the convention that one unit is one meter. In two-dimensional games, I usually kind of invent your own convention because the relation to meters isn't that much important, at least for most of the things. Um, so, what we do here is by default we have a viewport and the camera configured using the orthographic projection. And this camera by default has a height set to 1000. It means that uh, what you see is adjusted such that if you had an object that is 1000 units tall, then this object would kind of fit perfectly within the camera view. So we have here a plane that has size 200 and it means that it takes one fifth of your view, okay? 200 divided by 1000, then you can kind of confirm it. I mean, if you go to the camera one view, if you want to like measure it, then yeah, the height of the camera 1000 is here and the plane is 200 one fifth of your total uh, viewport height. Okay, so that's how it works, how it should work. And you can, of course, adjust this orthographic height as you wish. You can adjust this plane or delete it as you wish. It's just a starting point. Um, okay, what can I do here? Well, first of all, just as in 3D, I can just add a scene and load there anything I want, including even a three-dimensional object from GLTF or, or two-dimensional animation from Spine or Sprite Sheet, well, anything I want, I can load in the castle scene. Uh, I can also use some primitives. In particular, the plane is useful. If I want to add a new plane and make it two-dimensional, it would look like this. So I have added a plane. By default, it's very, very small, right? It's just two by two. So it's very, very small for a two-dimensional game. But well, let's make it larger, like this, okay? Now, where is it? Well, it's there, it's just uh, not aligned to the proper axis. By default, the plane is aligned such that uh, it, uh, it is parallel, the, uh, the plane is parallel to the constant y-axis, but you can just change it by specifying axis 2, which means axis z, which means that the plane will be parallel to the constant z-axis, which is, I guess, most useful and natural in case of if you want to have a square, a simple square in a two-dimensional game view, because in a two-dimensional game view, by default, you can change it, but by default, and we recommend sticking to this default, by default, in case of two-dimensional games, like the x-axis goes, um, when the x increases, it goes to the right, uh, the y-axis is your vertical axis, so when the y goes up, well, yeah, y goes up essentially and z represents the depth so you actually don't really see the changes in z uh, when it comes to your objects in two-dimensional game okay so doing this doesn't look like it's doing something it actually changes the order but it's not visible in case of the simple demo but changing the x and changing the y of course move the object uh, to the right or to the left so I can do things like this. Oh, and the plane by default is black. It's actually white, but it is also using lighting. And we don't have any lights set up in case of this initial two-dimensional viewport. You can use lighting in two-dimensional games. Sure, why not? It actually sometimes makes sense, especially if you use lighting and normal maps. You can have your two-dimensional images, sprites, kind of lit up in some interesting way to show some details of them. So, it, sometimes it makes sense to use lighting in two-dimensional games. But anyway, in case of this initial design, we don't even have any light. So, it's black. Unless I will turn it to the unlit version and then lighting doesn't matter and I guess that's a simpler starting point for a two-dimensional game. So I have made another 
white and lit square. Not very impressive, right? Uh, I can, of course, configure the color of it. I can create more such planes, by, for example, using the duplicate and going like this. And yeah, so I can create multiple stuff like this. And by the way, the three dimensional stuff also still works. So, as I kind of emphasized earlier, in case of our engine, the two dimensional games are just a special case of it, uh, three dimensional games. So, for example, if I will add the cone here, yeah, so it's visible here, it's there, it's there in the viewport, it's just very, very small. Uh, let me just make it larger, okay? So this is our cone, visible in 3D, okay? And by default, again, it's black because there is no lighting, but I can make it unlit and I can adjust the color to, well, I guess, whatever I want, okay? And this is a cone which in effect, it's just a triangle in case of a uh, view into dimensional game. Okay, so I can place various things here. And I emphasize if you want to make an actual game, what you will usually use is actually the scene that points to a caster sprite sheet or that points to a spine animation. You can, of course, also load images using the image, the caster image transform. So this is your way to uh, add a simple image here that is visible in the view. Um, okay, and going back to the cameras, because this was kind of supposed to be the focus of this presentation. So you can see what the camera is seeing. Now let's also do a test, right? So let's run the game and see that the user, when you run the game, is actually seeing the same thing. So I'm saving the design using run, compile and run, F9, okay. Okay, and there you have it. It's our simple 2D game displaying uh, three squares and a triangle. <laughs> so, very impressive uh, for a start. Okay, so that's our simple two-dimensional game. Uh, just as in the three-dimensional case, well, by default, the user doesn't really have an ability to move around here to change the camera. Uh, you can add such navigation by your own code, or you can allow the user to navigate freely, for example, adding the user interface navigation to the method, which will act kind of similar as you can yourself use it within the editor. Okay, so you can enable user to navigate in 2D. Uh, what more? Well, in this, uh, by default, in the two-dimensional viewport, you use something called 2D navigation, which I kind of hinted at before. In 2D navigation method, uh, sorry, in 2D navigation method, uh, you can move around your scene with the right mouse button. By using the mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in, zoom out. And you cannot kind of you cannot kind of break it. I mean, you can't uh, uncover the fact that it's 3D as long as you stay in the 2D navigation method. But of course, if you'd like to, you can switch to a 3D navigation method like fly. And now, if I rotate, this thing happens. Okay, so now I can actually uncover the fact that well, it's actually a three-dimensional scene. Okay, the camera gizmo. Uh, is a bit clipped here, but the, 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 the world is being rendered okay. I can also switch my camera view from orthographic to perspective. And let's, for example, focus on this plane, okay? And now you can see what is actually happening under the hood in the two-dimensional games. As you see, all those things that we have done are actually 3D objects. So in case of two-dimensional game, we have just set up the orthographic navigation so orthographic. We have also used the front view, which means that this X and Y axis are perfectly aligned to your screen. And finally, at design time, we are using the 2D navigation. So this is how you would turn a 3D into 2D, essentially. You want to have a specific direction of view. You want to have, usually, you want to have orthographic. And finally, you want to have a 2D specific navigation mode. And aside from those three things, yeah, it's all 3D under the hood. You can switch between it freely. You can switch those things that I mentioned. You can also switch them freely at runtime or at design time too. Okay, uh, so that's our basic way of moving around in a two-dimensional world. Uh, so now let's go back to the three-dimensional demos because now I want to talk about some more important properties of the cameras, the things that we have kind of enabled in our latest upgrade of the camera system. I have actually shown you one thing already, so you can have multiple cameras. Another thing is that the Tecastle camera is now a descendant of Tecastle Transform. Well, the obvious like uh, thing, uh, what it means, well, the, the, the oh, so I mean examining 
But the obvious thing that is a conse consequence of it is that uh, you can move the camera just like any other transformation object. Yeah. So I mentioned this one already. But now more consequences of the fact that the camera is a transformation object are that the camera can now have children. And the second thing, the camera can be a child of something else. And both of those features are actually very useful. Uh, let's so okay, so let's start by what, what, what we can do with it. So for example, I can add a child to the camera. Let's make this box a child of camera. And now what happens if I will move this box like this? Let me pin the camera view. Okay, so you will see from this perspective what happens. And now I have this box. Let's make it a bit smaller, like this. And what happens now? Well, as you can also, let's make it a little, right? Because otherwise, uh, this way it will just be visible no matter where I will place it. Okay, and now, as you can probably guess, the box stays glued to the camera. Whenever I will move the camera, like this, so the box, the blue box, stubbornly stays visible in the middle of the camera because it's a child of the camera now. Okay, so no matter what I do, the box stays in the middle. And this is a bit silly demo, but let me present to you a well, more real use case for it, I guess, which would be to use a weapon, to place a weapon in a first-person shooter. Such weapon is kind of naturally a child of the camera, and we have actually exactly a demo to show it. Let me switch here, switch to our FPS game demo and open the design there okay so this is the camera in a first person shooter game and as you can see in the preview already there is a weapon this is a weapon so this scene gun okay there is a weapon and this weapon is a child of the camera which means that if i will move the camera around the weapon kind of sticks to it and also it means that the weapon it still is a, I guess, a regular three-dimensional object. In particular, the weapon is still being affected by lights in a, well, correct, realistic way, right? So if I move the camera to a brighter spot, then the weapon is also lit a bit brighter, okay? And if I run the game, the weapon will, of course, stick to my camera. So let's do it, let's run the game. Okay, there we have it. And this is our simple first-person shooter game, done essentially completely in the editor, and the weapon is just playing some silly, I mean, silly, idle shooter animation, actually, in a loop, okay? Uh, so that's how you can place the weapon as a child of your camera. If you'd like to, you can actually go ahead and try this fierce, this way of creating fierce person shooter games yourself. Just make sure to define in the FPS game game initialize code the upcoming FPS game redesign symbol. This enables the usage of the new design with all those nice things that you can design in the editor. Though the one thing that doesn't yet work in this uh, in this way of creating game is that we don't have not yet uh, exposed the creature artificial intelligence in case of this way of creating FPS games. So as you like so a few seconds ago, the creatures, the knights that stand on the level, they don't actually do yet anything. Uh, we want to like port our previous artificial intelligence to the new system, this is actually one of the next features that we are going to be working on. So the upcoming FPS game redesign will, is the future, it will be what will be just available by default in our first person shooter game, and right now you can just try it out and see that, for example, this weapon lighting and everything there works perfectly. Just creature artificial intelligence doesn't work yet. No. Um, so, this was a particular uh, practical application of the fact that you can have a child uh, of a camera. Okay, What more does it mean that you can have a child of a camera? Well, right now it, uh, you can create a headlight, which means like a light that is basically stuck to a camera. Like you can imagine that it's stuck to a helmet that the player uh, is wearing. Okay, So if you want to create such headlight, you no longer need to be... We no longer need to use any special property like use headlight. 
that we have advised in the previous engine versions. Instead, right now, if you want to create a headlight, then well, go ahead and add a light as a child of the camera. That's it. Okay. And by default, the directional light has a good direction. Uh, the default, the directional light by default has a direction pointing along the negative Z, which matches the camera looking direction, which means that if you just add the directional light as a child of the camera, then you have a, I guess, default basic way of creating a headlight. Yeah? So let's test it out. Yeah? Let me delete the other lighting in the scene. Yeah? And now this camera, it is producing it is casting this whenever this camera looks at it is actually casting this light you don't have to of course use the directional light you can use any other light type for example here i attach the spotlight to a camera okay and now whenever the camera moves the spotlight moves of course and of course the user will actually see this thing so we have here some dark areas yeah but the user is always observing the world from the camera one so in case of user everything the thing that the user is looking at is uh, sensibly lit in this case. Okay, well, sensible for this <laughs> demonstration. Uh, okay, so this is a, now a simple way of creating headlight. Yeah, so just place the light as a child of the camera and it works. Uh, what more can I do now with cameras? Well, the camera can be now a child of something else. What does it mean? So let's switch to the new project 3D FPS game template. Okay. And here we have a design that shows a few soldiers. And we also have a camera that actually has a directional light as a child, so acting as a headlight, okay? So, okay, so by default this camera just stands on a level and user can walk using the walk navigation. But if I would like to, I can instead make the camera a child of, well, something else. For example, let's pick this soldier. So it's soldier one, okay, and let's make the camera a child of the soldier. So I will just drag it around like that, okay. Now the camera stayed in that uh, initial view, but I can reset the transformation of the camera to easily align it to the zero zero point of the soldier. And I guess that's an easier starting point for configuring things like this. And now whatever I will do, the camera will look at the, at the, at the face of this particular soldier. I can actually rotate it 180 degrees to instead make it look at what the soldier is looking at. Yeah, So it works like this. And now, whatever I will do with this soldier from code or at design time, ah, let's pin the camera so we keep observing what happens. Yeah? So whatever I do with this soldier, like this, like this, so I'm dragging now the soldier. And when I'm dragging the soldier, also the camera along with the soldier is uh, moving, rotating, and so on, and so on. So you can use this feature to kind of mount the camera, for example, to one of your vehicles or uh, enemies or anything else you would like to. Another consequence of the fact that the camera can be now a child of something else is that now we get a new way to animate the camera because you can use a feature in Caster Game Engine called Expose Transforms, which allow you to uh, expose any animated bone, which is really any animated transformation inside your GLTF file. You can expose it in the sense that this will create a castle transform that is a child of soldier, and this castle transform will be animated just like the original bone in the GLTF file is animated. So let me pick here something essentially random just to show you that it works, okay? So we have created a few transformations here that correspond to particular bones in our model. I didn't assign the sensible names in Blender, that's why, well, they don't have sensible names in Castle Game Engine 2. But of course, I could have assigned them sensible names in Blender and then I would see sensible names in Castle Game Engine 2. But the point here is that now I can place my camera as a child of this bone. So it works like this. I guess let's start by resetting the transformation of the camera. Uh, if I want to pause this animation for a second, one way to do this is to set the time playing speed to zero. And for example, now let's configure what the camera should be looking at. Maybe like this. It's a bit silly demo, I know. I will show a more sensible demo in a second, yeah? But this is how the camera could like point out from this gun 
of the soldier. Let's move it a bit so that it doesn't collide. Okay. Let's now re-enable the animation. And it works like this. Uh, a bit silly, I warned about this, <laughs> so uh, I just assigned the camera to essentially random bone in my level, but the point here is that, well, it works. Let me show a more sensible application of it. So let me open a project that is actually our own Castle Game Engine Editor. Castle Game Engine Editor also has actually parse design using Castle Game Engine Editor, so it's nice when we can kind of dog food, use our own creation to create more. And in particular, if you go to Castle Game Engine Editor, activate system information, you see such interesting design that basically shows you that the well, it's, it's a fun thing, basically. And by the way, it shows you that this OpenGL stuff works, that this audio stuff works. You should see the build chipping uh, sound uh, right now, and it's special. I mean, it, 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 it's stereo, yes, yeah? so and sometimes it's from the right, sometimes it's from the left channel of your headphones. Uh, so, this is a, basically a silly animation, <laughs> and that's actually just uh, animation of the camera. So, it's not the tower here that is animating, it's the camera that is animating around the tower. And let me show you how it is actually done by opening the related design. And if I look up, look from the mo zoom, zoom out, if I will look like this, you can see what's happening here. Yeah? So this is our camera and it goes around the model. And how it's being done? Well, because the camera, our regular camera, has been placed as a child of the camera orientation bone. And the camera orientation bone, it's something I have designed in Blender and expose it in Castle Game Engine using the expose transforms, okay? So this way I can kind of use the camera navigation, actually use any, uh, use the camera animation, but actually I can use any animation I have designed in Blender, I can use any such animation to animate my camera, okay? Let's see how it looks like in Blender, actually, for a second. Okay, so this is our tower, and if I run the animation, it looks like this, okay? So the camera, so it, I emphasize the tower is not moving here, the camera is moving around, both in Castle Game Engine and in Blender case. And we have just exported this to Blender, and this created a bone called Camera Orientation, and we can attach there our Castle Game Engine camera to achieve essentially the same effect of camera uh, animation in Castle Game Engine. And this is now kind of my favorite way of animating the camera. It deprecates some previous approaches with auto camera property, whatever. And they they know they are no longer that useful, not not useful at all, I think, because now it's much simpler. Yeah, so you don't have any special property to animate the camera. No need to just animate anything you want in Blender or in any other format. Use the expose transforms to actually have an animated bone, and then place the camera as a child of it. And that, there you go, that's your way to create the camera animation in a simple and reliable way. Okay, so that's another, I guess, consequence of the fact that the camera is now a child of, can be now a child of something else. Okay. Okay, uh, so some final notes about the improvements that we have recently done. So one thing is that the camera projection far and near parameters are now correctly automatically calculated both in case of three-dimensional and in case of uh, two-dimensional games. Pay before the far camera projection far is infinity. You can actually use such matrix uh, for the perspective projection. So we do use it, so it's easy. Yeah, you, you don't have a projection far, you don't have a clipping plane that cuts off what you see in the distance. The projection near is set to basically a hard-coded number that is uh, 0.05, uh, as far as I recall. So, long story short, you probably don't want to touch those properties for most cases because you don't need to. They are automatically cut calculated to something useful. Although, of course, well, just for the sake of demo, let me show that you can. Yeah? So if I decrease the projection far of the camera, yeah, so this is what the projection far does. It basically cuts off what you see at the distance of 20. It's very hard cut, like it, you really don't see anything beyond the distance of 20. So 
it, I guess, may have some uh, game logic application. If you really want the user to not see things from far away, you can combine it with fog to make it actually look a bit better for the player. And uh, yeah, so you can control this projection far and near uh, explicitly if you want. But I kind of emphasize that probably in case of normal games, you won't need to anymore. Um, okay, and the final words, the things that we have improved, and I was actually showing it all the time when I was showing this editor, mm, is that our key shortcuts are now much better. Uh, previously we had a little um, conundrum, um, we didn't know how to perfectly uh, use some key shortcuts because they were conflicting with your editing operations in the edit boxes here. Uh, long story short, I have figured out a way to do them in a way that works. So, what does it all mean? It means that you can just use the obvious key shortcuts in the editor, okay? So, for example, I can do Ctrl C now to copy the box and now I can do Ctrl V to paste this box and this way, this is like another way, I guess, to create a new box. Uh, Ctrl D means to duplicate the cylinder, okay, so now I have duplicated the cylinder. Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, it means to create more and more cylinders, because uh, for some reason that's what I want to do here. Uh, what more? Well, uh, there is a cut by Ctrl C, delete is just uh, bound to the delete key, so I can delete all those, <laughs> all those duplicates that I have created here. I can just delete them by the delete key. And uh, finally, the undo operation is bound to the most natural key possible, which is Ctrl Z, of course. That's actually it. That's everything I want to talk about. The cameras, navigation methods, navigation, like how do you move your camera, in the editor and in custom game engine games. Thank you very much for listening. I emphasize, like, go ahead and try it out yourself. Then it's all much more natural and obvious, I guess. So go ahead, download the Caster Game Engine, try it out yourself. If you like it, please also consider supporting us on Patreon. We very much count on your donations to keep the engine going. We want to hire, we already like hire Andrzej Kliański, uh, who, well, brought a new quality to the engine, he's great, and I want more such people, and I want them to have more time to work on the engine and create amazing stuff. So we count on your donations to, well, have more people, have more time to develop the engine. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.